Pink classic iconic British rivalries. Liverpool versus Manchester United, Oasis versus Beatles, Jaguar versus Aston Martin. And today we've got something similar. The most popular motorcycle manufacturer of the 1960s, BSA, going up against the most popular mid-displacement motorcycle manufacturer of the 2020s, Royal Enfield. Exactly, times have changed. Royal Enfield is the segment leader. It kind of bought a revolution when it got the 650 twins. You got a 650cc motorcycle with the twin cylinder for that price point. We didn't see that coming. And no wonder this motorcycle is the segment leader. But till now, it had a long run without any competition. But now there is the BSA Gold Star to take on the Interceptor 650. And the best part is that both these motorcycles have a British heritage, but they are owned by Indian companies. So this will be a pretty fierce competition. So the question still remains, is your next 650cc purchase better off being a single or should you still stick with a twin? Let's find out. So let's first address the elephant in the room and that's the engine and performance. Both these motorcycles have similar displacement. In terms of power figures, also they are same. This makes slightly more power. The BSA makes more torque. So how is the performance in the real world, Yarn? So uh, this makes it torque a little lower in the RPM. That has six speed gearbox. This has five speed. But actually, when you're riding these two motorcycles, zero to 100 is virtually similar in that sense. Okay. Right? Uh, even though this is slightly lighter, it doesn't make use of its advantage. Off the line, yes, it might be just slightly better. But when you want to get to the triple digit speeds, both of them are neck and neck. Exactly. Like, it has a slight edge till 50 kph, the BSA. But then the twin kicks in and till 100 kph, they're almost neck to neck. And in terms of cruising speeds, both these motorcycles can do easily 100, 120. There's no problem. But then again, the twin cylinder comes into the picture because the refinement of the Interceptor 650 is better. I'm not saying the BSA is a very unrefined engine, say like an old classic 500. You feel a bit of a buzz on the handlebar, but then again, the twin for the win. Yeah, and on the highway when you are sustaining 120, 130, Yes, that engine will be capable of doing it, but you got to think that these are still retro motorcycles. So settling down in the pace, keeping it at 100, 110 is chill zone for both of these motorcycles. But the story flips in the city because this engine with its heavy bottom end torque is lovely and calming to ride in the city, right? Especially you keep it in third, fourth gear and it will do the business all day long. Yeah, Jayan, because the heft of the Interceptor 650 comes into the element. In terms of engine, the low-end performance, mid-range performance of the Interceptor is very nice. But because this is a hefty motorcycle, the riding dynamics in the city, the Interceptor feels a bit bulky. The other aspect that works in the favour of the BSA is the light clutch action. The clutch on the Interceptor is heavier, so that makes commuting a bit more easier on the BSA. And one thing we forgot that uh, even though this has just got 5 speed, you don't really miss the 6-speed exactly. six six gearbox. So the gear ratios are well spaced out in that sense. Overall, uh, both of them also have a very good soundtrack for a single. This sounds lovely, right? But then you can't beat the harmony and the bassy nature of the Interceptor 650. One more aspect that I would like to mention is the engine heat. So even though we are shooting in the monsoon pretty heavy rains, you could feel a bit of heat on the BSA even though it gets a liquid cool engine while the Interceptor although it's a very old school air cooled engine felt more cooler. Yeah and when you're comparing uh, fuel efficiencies as well both of them are virtually similar. Now since we were riding for the shoot giving a little bit more action based yeah. shots fuel efficiency wasn't the best so we got around 19 kmpl on both of these motorcycles in shoot conditions which are absolutely the worst. But you can expect around 23, 24 kmpl, especially we've lived with that bike. We've got those figures and a similar thing is over here. But what makes the Interceptor slightly better is that it can hold one liter of fuel more than the BSA. Yeah, that's not much in terms of the difference. But yeah, when you're cruising on the highway, both this motorcycle should be doing around 24, 25 kmpl. 
which is roughly good enough for like 250 odd kilometers on a full tank so we fell in love with this engine from 2018 and that love story still continues so in terms of performance i think the interceptor has a bit of an edge because of the refinement and the nature of the engine but then again there are other aspects that we need to tackle so let's check out the comfort aspect of this two motorcycle So when we are talking about the foundation, instantly you recognize that the BSA Gold Star is a more relaxed, comfy, calming motorcycle because of its posture, right? 780 mm seat height, 800 mm seat height, so it's obviously lower and that's done with the repackaging of the engine oil sump, whereas that is still placed over there. And this motorcycle, well, it sort of feels like a middle ground between the Interceptor and a classic 650. Oh. Sorry, a classic 350, I mean. Yeah. There's a 650 coming later on, but that we'll get to it later. But in that sense, this is calming, very upright and very easy and comfy. Yeah, Jayan, I think the riding posture of the BSA is like a typical roadster. The foot pegs are center set, you have a nice wide handlebar and the bend seat also adds to the element. For the interceptor, the handlebar position I feel is a bit too forward, the foot pegs are slightly rear set, so you have a slightly canted forward riding posture. It's not a very bad riding posture, say like it's not as sporty as a Conti GT, but in terms of a roadster or in terms of the overall ergonomics, the BSA has the edge. The biggest issue for me with the Interceptor 650 has always been the seat because the cushioning is too soft. When you're riding for long hours, you kind of sink into the seat. The frame kind of hits your under thigh. That's not the case with the BSA. It has a nice firm seat. So in terms of the overall ergonomics, I think the BSA has the edge. But this story continues even for the pillion seat, right? Because again, because this is a single, it's not quite as wide, it's narrow and compact and it only has one exhaust. Thank you Classic Legends for giving the Gold Star only one exhaust and not two exhausts like the other single cylinder that you have. And that means the exhaust is not quite as raked up or upswept as it's the yeah. case on the Interceptor. It's lower, the pillion foot pegs can be lower and even taller riders can find their comfortable stance sitting behind. And sitting behind Arun on that bike, I don't like it. Arun doesn't like sitting <laughs> behind me on the Interceptor. But over here, we can bear each other just easily. Yeah, on the Interceptor, apart from the foot peg, the, the shape of the seat is such. When you're sitting on the back, and if you're going hard on the gas, you always have a sensation that you're going to fall back, which is not the case on the BSA. So in terms of ergonomics, both for the rider and the pillion, the BSA has got it sorted. The second aspect of comfort is definitely ride quality. The Interceptor 650, again the suspension setup of this motorcycle, we have always complained that we don't like this setup. And with the update, we expected Rod and Phil to address that, but they haven't done so. The BSA again has the same setup in terms of the suspension units, but the ride quality of the BSA is much better than this Interceptor, right? Yeah, because that is wishy-washy, confused and not cohesive. Whereas over here, you get to know what the front end is doing, what the rear end is doing. Even though the rear end does feel a tad bit on the firmer side, I'm not saying it's jarring or harsh, but it just doesn't absorb it with just as finesse. And considering that these suspension units are not the most sophisticated, yeah. you can get away with it, but it still gives you that settled feeling when you're say sitting on the highway and going over the minor undulations, right? Yeah, minor undulations, no problem on the BSA. Uh, Jayan doesn't agree with me, but I still feel that the suspension of the BSA is slightly more on the firmer side. Among these two motorcycles, yes, yeah. definitely the BSA has advantage. So even for the rider going over the bad roads, it feels nicer. So overall in terms of comfort, the BSA has the edge, both in terms of ergonomics and in terms of ride quality among these two motorcycles. that sort of also helps us because when you are taking these bikes out into the twisties if you encounter twisties right when you are handling this feels more sorted this feels more settled because again lower stance slightly wider longer wheelbase in that front and it feels very natural even though this is not the most agile or sharp it feels very balanced it feels very neutral yeah it just feels a bit more stable in that sense the Interceptor has the shorter wheelbase among the two, but when you're riding it, you feel that the, this motorcycle is much more longer. You don't have much connection what the front end is doing, what the rear end is doing. The suspension, again, that valoey nature kind of robs you of feel when you want to corner fast. 
One more issue is the tyres, the C8 tyres are not the best unit out over here. So even though the chassis has the potential of being a good handler, which we have seen on the Conti GT, that's not the case with the Interceptor. So in terms of if you want to ride fast or corner fast, the BSA feels more natural. Yeah, I, I'm still confused why Royal Enfield couldn't give the same resistant tyres on the Interceptor like they've done on the Continental GT. Well, coming back to the BSA, even though this has got the Pirelli Phantom Sport Comp tyres, which we didn't quite like on the older Interceptor, this over here feel quite nice. I'm not saying they are great, they are still a little, uh, say, twitchy in that sense, but they feel composed over here. Yeah, I mean, especially in the wet when we were riding yesterday, yeah. it was pretty raining a lot. When I switched back on the BSA, I just felt that this motorcycle had a bit more confidence in the wet condition. And I was a bag of nerves. <laughs> and, and yeah, we could see the bike shaking and doing its bit. So in terms of handling, if you want to do like a bit of fast cornering, yes, these motorcycles are not meant for fast cornering, but if you're on the mountain roads, you want to have some fun, the BSA has it much more sorted. And the same thing continues even if you want to do city riding. The ergonomics of the motorcycle is spot on, doesn't feel too heavy in terms of the weight distribution. So when you want to go through the city, the agility of the BSA feels better, while the Interceptor feels a bit more lazy kind of. And uh, similar braking performance of both, even though that's got sintered pads, it feels slightly better, but because of the not great tyres, it robs you of that phenomenal braking performance. It's quite interesting that the BSA gets Brembo brakes and not Vibre brakes. Uh, and the interesting bit is that Royal Enfield had got it first with the Conti 535 and it had also introduced Pirelli tyres with the Interceptor 650 and now it has Pirelli tyres and Brembo brakes. So, kind of a nice thing, yeah? Yeah. And uh, in terms of features, both of them are pretty <laughs> much uh, devoid of any modern features. Like, even though this has got, okay, there is one aspect over here which is, this is a twin and that is a single. Can you guess what? The display. <laughs> so guess this twin got, display. This has got a very small digital display, both in each of the clusters. But I like the touch of the center pod giving the telltale signs. Just like the olden Goldies. Yeah, the old Goldie had the amp meter over there, so that's a nice touch. The instrument console of the Interceptor hasn't changed from the beginning. We thought it would change with the update. We thought this display was bad, then BSA up the ante with that <laughs> display because you will require a magnifying glass just to see what's happening down there. Again, in terms of navigation, both these motorcycles don't get anything. It's very surprising because all the other RE motorcycles get that tripper pod, but the Interceptor doesn't get that. So you are better off with a physical map on both these motorcycles, so they are staying true to the retro element of these bikes. And uh, that's got a USB Type-A charger, this has got Type-A and Type-C, as well as a 12-volt socket over here. So a lot more charging options. And finally, that's got an LED headlight which doesn't work quite as well. No. This has got a halogen bulb headlamp which also does okay. Yeah. So, okay. features, what features, both of these motorcycles say that. Yeah, very old school in their approach and even in terms of the styling, uh, both go for a retro styling. I think the BSA just looks proper. Classic legends have the history. They got it right with the Java and the same story continues with the BSA Gold Star. It looks properly retro and the elements on the fuel tank, the lacquer design over there, the shape of the fuel tank, the shape of the mudguard, the bend seat, it just feels more cohesive in terms of the form factor. I'm not saying the Interceptor is a bad looking motorcycle, even it has a bit of thing going for it, especially with this blacked out theme. It looks a bit more modern. Yes, again, it gets a LED headlight, but I think in terms of the pure visual appeal, the BSA just looks beautiful to my eyes. But uh, convenience where convenience goes, that gets an alloy wheel option. Oh, yeah. It does rob you of the classic design, but hey, if it solves the puncture problem, I am all for the alloy wheels, right? I think Jan, BSA should have offered a uh, alloy wheel option on the BSA. We know how much time Royal Enfield took to give that on the Interceptor 650. Four Almost years. four years for this to come. But that would have added more convenience. I know it would have spoiled the look of the motorcycle. But then again, convenience also has its own merit. And I think the alloy wheel doesn't look that bad on the Interceptor, right? Let's just address the question, single or a twin? Uh, first, uh, let's go to the pricing bit because let's start with the price because first you have to shell out the money. Uh, this undercuts the base interceptor by some 3-4 thousand. 
yeah. but then again you have to buy the main stand because that's a standard axle which means you'll have to purchase it but it won't be added to the ex showroom price so very smartly played by bsa over there i think the pricing of the bsa is slightly on the higher side it yeah. should have been like 10000 15000 more affordable at least as an introductory because it's a new brand okay it's a very iconic brand but in the indian context it is coming over here should have had a better impact yeah and uh, when you compare the top versions which is this one this cost 3.34 lakh rupees whereas ah. the top chrome version is 5000 rupees or 4000 rupees less on the interceptor so this is coming in as a more premium variant which it certainly doesn't feel that way too much my right? point is what is premium on that apart from the color uh, so you're basically charging for that chrome 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 exactly just finished there's no additional features or something and you're charging what 30000 more <laughs> i don't I see the point wonder wonder where we've seen that charging more for colors ah uh, yeah nice color on the <laughs> rod and field as well yeah. anyways moving on in terms of the motorcycle again the bsa sticks to to a proper old school roadster uh the interceptor again does the same thing that engine on this bike is just so beautiful i think when you remove the engine from the interceptor then you realize that the interceptor was never that a great motorcycle i think yeah. it was the engine that made us all fall in love with it yeah and what what is paining me right now is that this bike doesn't feel special anymore right yeah. it should have gotten the updates which it will get in some time but currently of the two motorcycles this feels like the better motorcycle exactly right? in terms of a sheer motorcycle perspective the bsa has feels the ergonomics is nice the engine even though it's a single in terms of the nature of a old retro motorcycle is right up there and the suspension the ride quality the comfort aspect it is scoring a lot of aspects on the bsa then so why are we holding back my only issue with the bsa is that it's a all new motorcycle so it's an all new platform so we don't know how it will you know last the indian weather condition it has performed well in the european conditions but we all know how tough our conditions are the second aspect is the dealership and the service quality because java or maybe should i say classic legends don't have a great record with that they are going to launch this motorcycle only in 50 dealerships to ensure that the service quality to all the customers is premium given the premium price tag but then again that is something we'll have to wait and watch so ideally i will say the bsa gold star is a better motorcycle among this compared but it is on probation and jehan will explain you that yeah so just like how you join a new job and you are sitting there for a probationary period where the company gets to know you you get to know the company and figure out whether you're the right match or not that's the scene with the bsa gold star it is figuring out whether it is the right match for india yeah. that way and whether india is a right match for itself so let's say give it 3 months give it time let's see what it comes up with and if there are any known issues or anything it throws up with but as of now i would happily if it turns out that this is a very solid and stable platform i would happily get this over the interceptor yeah definitely as a motorcycle the bsa has the advantage over the interceptor i still feel the pricing could have been a bit more affordable yeah. but then again for sure joy of motorcycling a proper roadster experience i think the bsa just has got it right and it's time for the roll and fail to strike back yeah because this is the best classic retro roadster so far wonder when the next classic comes because this is the year of the classic exactly siddharth lal has mentioned that this year will be the year of the classics and we are expecting the classic 650 to hit the showrooms and the indian roads pretty soon i think that motorcycle will be a better competition for the gold star 650 but among these two the goldy is the better bike so what do you think about these two bikes what do you think about our verdict do let us know in the comment section below do you disagree with it do you agree with it let us know that also don't forget to like and share this video subscribe to our channel look out for cool interesting short format videos on our instagram page over there as well always wear riding gear stay safe on the roads <laughs>